and then they hug you. I like that bucket. That's why things that are foreign to you trip you up because you don't have a bucket for that. And your mind goes through this process of, oh, my gosh, what do I do with this? Exactly. Until you get to the place where you can assign it to a bucket that will allow you to process it further. Does that make sense? So that's how the mind works, okay? I can't draw, but I'm hoping you at least got. So what, so what am I saying? Why did, why did I draw that up there? When we talk about the mind, what has to happen for you to be able to write and live by your vision is you've got to give up these buckets. You've got to give these up. Because these buckets, the way we process information, mean nothing in God's eyes. He wants you to see them through his buckets, not your preconceived buckets. He wants you to see people, you know, if, if, they're, if they come in and they're looking down, he doesn't want you to see them as, oh, they get on my nerves. They're always looking down. There's always something wrong with them. Schleff rock, what's the problem today? They want, he wants you to see them with love. He wants to, you to see them with understanding. He wants you to see them with empathy. So transforming the mind means these buckets got to go. All of your I can't buckets. Pastors talked about this a couple times. Your I'm too old buckets. They've got to go because they're meaningless to the kingdom. If he has a vision for you, that vision lives as long as you live. And our goal is to accomplish it before they lay us down. Amen? All right. Next page. So definitions. When we look back at Romans 12, I'm interested in the, in the fact that he used the word transformed instead of changed. Can anybody tell me the difference, you know, without looking at your sheet this time? <laughs> Can anybody tell me the difference between transformed and changed? Why didn't he just say by the uh, renew your mind by the changing of your mind rather than by the transforming of your mind? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So you get me in trouble. Oh, live stream. Okay. Yes. When you when one one changes their mind, it would be like saying, "I pray, I faith. I'm going to change from pray to faith." But when I renew my mind, transform, I go to family. Family. In other words, a totally different thing. Anybody else? Oh, amen. We got one in the back. Let me finish this. Mm. <laughs> A transformation is permanent. Change can change over and over again. That's right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anything else? Definitions. Thank you. transform my clothes, but I can change my clothes. Right. That so is a there's, there's definitely a difference. There's definitely a difference. It just seems like transformation is a process, it's a progression type thing, and change seems like it's something that's more swift than something that's just done. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, now this is even in the transformer first it's a uh, first and a monster, then it's a car. It transforms. Right. And be able to transform into something else. Absolutely. I like the and there's no resemblance to what it used to look like. That's right. That's right. That's right. What will it look like? Okay. Wonderful. So the little little quote at the bottom of the page, change fixes the past. Transformation creates the future. And just like you've said, it's I'm sorry, it's on the one that says the definitions of change and transform. Yeah, right at the bottom of that. Change is change. It happens all the time. You can change your mind a hundred different times. It just I just think about myself in the morning with what I'm going to wear. Oh, my Lord. 
So I start out with one pair of pants and the shirt doesn't look right. So I change the shirt, but now the pants don't look right. Or, you know, the, the, this shirt has a little bit of wrinkle, so maybe I should change. No, change is a continual process. Transformation is a finite process where you are transformed. The desire to be changed is gone. You are now a new creature, and you have no desire to go back to do the things that you did before. So transformation is a final process. So once we make the decision, and we're going to pray that we make that tonight, we're gonna, that's, that, that's how we're going to close in prayer. Once we make the decision that our minds are transformed, they are, whether we act like it or not. Does that make sense? Changing your mind, okay, I'm not going to eat red meat. I've, I've made this declaration a hundred times, and I still eat a beef roast every now and again. Changing your mind is, okay, I made it a week, I didn't eat red meat. I made it two weeks, I didn't eat red meat, but I'm about to eat this red meat for Thanksgiving. That's changing your mind. Transforming your mind is removing the taste for that out of your system entirely so you don't go back and have a desire to go back to whatever that thing was. And that's where we have to be as we create our vision statements. Once we know what we're here for, we'll never be able to negate that. We can walk away from our vision, meaning I could know what I'm here for and I can decide to do some other things, but I'm still transformed because I've accepted my vision and I just need to walk in that. Make sense? All right. So to achieve our personal vision, this next slide, these are the bullets that Pastor gave us um, last week. I just wanted to reiterate that. We have to see and believe God, see and believe God caring for us. We have to see value in Jesus' blood for us. We have to see ourselves as able to accomplish the will of God. And we have to put everything that God says above everything else. And we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God made us. And the next slide, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5, says that we have to destroy every argument. Because the enemy is going to argue with you. He's going to cause you to reason. He's going to cause you to wonder. He's going to cause you to flake. Well, is that really your vision? You know, okay, so I'll tell you what mine is. Ultimately, I want to own a nonprofit organization called Not Without My Pencil. Not Without My Pencil will do both training and educational strategies for schools and for educational service centers, for colleges, and they will write grants to provide uh, alternative learning techniques. So like smart boards where the kids with their computers, they can just type and their information will come up on a smart board. I have no money to do that right now, but I believe that not without my pencil will exist before I leave this earth. I believe it. I believe it. There's no reason in the world why I could have that kind of vision and, and there be that kind of need, especially in this city, and it not come into fruition. So I don't care what the devil says. I don't care about his argument about money. I don't care about his argument that I don't know the right people. I don't care about his argument that I'm not necessarily in education in that way. We have to cast those down, and we have to walk out our visions from this point forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. So write the vision. Whew, that was a long introduction to a couple activities that I want to do today to kind of make sure that when you leave here, you're ready to write your vision. The next slide, why a vision statement? We've talked about this some. There are some points there on your slide. Hold on to those. But just make sure you know that it's a reference point. It's a lovely way, Pastor Sprinkle said this when she taught, it's a lovely way of not getting out of your lane. It's a nice way to tell people no when they ask you to do something you have no ability to do. No desire to do. It's not even, it's not even the direction that you're headed. It, ha it does not line up with your vision at all whatsoever. It keeps you grounded. There are some people that are, I call them busy, because they're everywhere in the church. They might, you know, sweep the floor. They might sing a little bit. They might, you know, everything. They're going to cook for the uh, Feed the Needy program. They gonna, everywhere. They, they, you're just busy. No. God has a purpose for your life. Do it and do it well and let everything else fall to the side. 
allow God to grow up the people he needs in those other places while you're found doing what he's asked you to do. And that's what a vision statement does for you. It answers, what do I want to do with my life, regardless of how old or how young you are? It answers, what's important to me? It answers, what are my talents? What are my anointings? It answers, what do I want to have before I leave this earth? A vision statement is short, it's concise, it's three or four sentences. Some people go on for days on a vision statement. We're not going that far. We're going to make our short and concise because ultimately I want you to be able to know it in your head so that you can use it as a litmus test every time somebody presents something new to you. It's going to be real short, it's going to be concise, but it's going to be full enough for you to be able to answer and evaluate any recommendation, any suggestion, anything somebody is trying to plan in your life. So if you would, <coughs> excuse me, in adult education, we do this uh, activity. It's called Think, Pair, Share. You're going to learn it tonight. We're going to do an activity. Do you have it? Did you bring a notebook? I was about to say, I'm not sure if you were here. Good to see you. Think, Pair, Share. Think, pair, share. Think, pair, share. We do a lot of different activities in adult education because it's a little bit different from K-12. But they, they kind of benefit adult learning styles. And think, pair, share is one of them. So the activity we're going to do, first page of your new journal, your new life, your fresh start, is we're going to take just a few minutes and we're going to write about a leader you admire. And what I'm going to ask you to do is write the characteristics or the things about that leader that you admire. So you first, this is a two-step thing. A leader you admire. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. And someone, someone you are familiar enough with to be able to say, these are the things that they do that I admire, or these are the character traits that they have that I admire. Does that make sense? All right, take about five minutes and do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you're going to write down the characteristics about them that you admire. The, the uh, four bullets, if you want to look at those, are on the slide that starts with an activity. Stream, you should do this as well. The, qu the statements are, you're thinking of an admired leader. Think about why you chose them. Think about who that leader is, what characteristics you like about them. Think about what they did. Think about some of the results. And just write down, you know, some of the characteristics that you admire in your leader. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not advocating that you make anybody an idol at all. <laughs> let, let me, that, that was actually a good point. Let me be clear about that. All I'm asking is there, you've got to have at least one person that you think, oh, wow, they do this well. Or they, they carry a characteristic that I, that I, that I like in people. And it doesn't even have to be a leader. It could be, could be anybody. Just think of through, ultimately what I want you to get to is some characteristics that you look for in a leader. Does that make sense? So if you can't think of one that you admire, go about it from that direction. 
it could be somebody who's already passed. Yep. Three more minutes to get some stuff done. Okay, as you're finishing up your writing about your admired leader, the pair part is, you know, faith cometh by hearing. It, it, you know, this is, a, this is a world technique, but it makes sense in the church. The pair part is we're going to pair up with someone, and you're going to tell them who your leader is, and you're going to share with them the characteristic that you've admired. Does that make sense? So we've got the think part down, we've got the pair part down, and you're getting ready to share. So pick one person with whom you could share your leader, your admired leader. Right there together. Has everyone had an opportunity to share their admired leader? Yes. You need a couple more minutes or are we good? I'm glad you did. Does anybody want to share with the whole group? Orange, you glad we did. <laughs> anybody want to share the admired leader characteristics with the whole group? Go on now. It's always wonderful to have a volunteer. I put down uh, Deacon Robert Whitfield, and I, I put down his his love for the his love for the Lord, 
his ability to always have a word of encouragement, the way he carries himself and cares for his family, his study of the word of God, his ability to always see the good in you, and he's always willing to go the extra mile. Anyone else want to share? Yeah, I want to share the solemn pose. <laughs> it was funny that the person that I paired with, she and I picked the same person, which was our own pastor, and we both said the same things about her. And uh, some of her characteristics is I love how transparent she is. I love her big heart, which reminds me a lot of myself. Um, I, I didn't even write this down, but I like her laugh. I think it's yeah. funny. <laughs> um, I like her confidence uh, in herself. Uh, I admire her ability to put you in your place without hurting or putting you down. Uh, Dr. Sprinkle used the word diplomatic. Uh, I, I like her love for people. She's always looking for good, knowing that there's something good in or about every person. You know, she don't think you just, ooh, you just rotten, rotten, rotten. She thinks that there's something good about you. And I and I like how she com compliments others. Anyone else? One more person. Who said? Oh, no, my person was um, my old platoon sergeant. Uh, Sorry in first class, uh, Gerald Miller, because he was, he was confident and not afraid to mess up. He was about his business. He was humble, a people person, a listener, compassionate. He was accountable, and then he held you accountable, and he led by example. So why, why do you think I had you do this activity? Just because I wanted to know how many votes I made. Why do we do this activity? To help you do what? Okay, so how how does looking at your admired lead, admired leader help you with creating your own vision? I think it gives you a vision board of somebody that I really like to be like on with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would like to. I I aspire his 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 study of the word, his, the way he cares for his family. Yeah. So the way he's you know that I just I want to be that. Yeah. Okay. Probably a visual picture of what I want my future to be like. Good, good, good. Okay, I got one more way back here. <laughs> I think you recognize skills in your role model, your leader, that you see or feel somewhere in yourself. Absolutely. Those are all correct. We did this activity, yes, because a lot of the things, tell the truth, a lot of the things that you admire in your leader are either A, things that you either want to strive to or you kind of see in your own life. Right? So it gives you now a, I don't want to say standard, maybe that is what it is. It gives you someone to look to, yeah, to respect, to kind of look forward to and say, okay, like Mike, somebody said it. Like Mike, it gives you that visual. So now you have a ref, another reference point to kind of move you forward in your vision. Make sense? All right. So this next activity we're going to do, second page of your notebook. And I've got markers, y'all. Okay, Pastor Sprinkle says she want to know who everybody else picked. So we're going to pass the mic. Right, just, just give us who you picked. My pastor sister. Okay. My husband. My mother. My great uncle. Amen. So now we have a list of characteristics that we can strive for or that we can kind of keep in the forefront so that as we're pushing toward our vision, we know what we like to see in our in other folks. So those things need to be very present in our vision statements. Amen. So next page. Taking you. I'm sorry. right all right next page 
this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but you gotta trust me in this. Again, very visual. And because 90% of what we remember is visual, we're gonna do this activity. Draw your future state. Future state. Yes. Mm -mm. Your future condition. Anything. What, if I were to ask you what you would look like five years, 10 years, yes. Because this is going to be remain a part of your journal as you finish your vision statement. No, not on the orange paper. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That was con confusing. I had to do it at the wrong time. So you're going to draw your future state. I can see in Krista's face. She's like, Lord, have mercy. Draw. Yes, we're going to draw your future state. Draw. Yep. Not on the orange paper. In your notebook. Yes. Do you not have notes? I'm sorry. It's okay. Neither can I. Look, look at my mind over here. Stick figures are okay. No one is going to see this but you. You can draw anything you want. Whatever you think your future state is, draw it. I, and I, yeah. Okay. See? Your future state. That's where you move. No. <laughs> Part of the vision, hey. All right. It doesn't have to be the most creative thing. It'll be meaningful to you, though, and that's the important piece of this activity. Meaningful to you. Mine was all stick figures. It was it meant a whole lot to me, but not a whole lot to anybody else. She's adding more to her picture. I'm sorry. No, we're going to write on that one. <laughs> you can write. You can draw. Which I just want to tap into your creative juices. I need to pull you out of your current lanes so that you can creatively come up with what your vision statement will be. If you, hey. If you want to draw the Sistine Chapel on that piece of paper, <laughs> help yourself. Wonderful. All right, does anybody want to share? You want to share? This one I'll do. I want to be 61220. I want to be financially successful. I want to be able to give mightily. I want to be married happily and successfully. I want my children to honor me. And then I had no more and I forgot. I put no more, but I've, I didn't finish that. Uh, no, 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 that's as far as I got. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else want to share? I put, I am a millionaire, then a billionaire. And I put a billion dollars on there. I will build a wellness center, a housing complex, 
a mission school in Liberia. That was a prophetic word. And then a prison ministry. picture is um it shows that me um in in the in the ministry and um me competing in the strong man competitions. Um I, <laughs> uh, I wanna be able to have have a family and do it the right way this time. Um I wanna travel and uh I want the the mentorship and outreach program to take off. So why did I have you do this activity? You got to have something to work toward. Absolutely. The people perish. Absolutely. So, and waste time and resources. So we've walked up to just by you describing your future state, just by you thinking about and drawing out where it is you want to be, where you want to land, we've already really started describing your vision statement. We've started creating some of the elements that go really well into your vision statement. You want to be a millionaire. That's a vision statement. You want to be finance billionaire. I'm sorry. No, I, said I, am. I am. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let me get it right. <laughs> Absolutely. We've already started putting elements, little clauses of our vision statements together just by drawing our future state. And like I said, I asked you to draw it because I wanted to open up your creativity. Sometimes we limit ourselves. We always limit ourselves. We always think within the bounds of what we feel like we're capable of. But to draw it, A, takes you out of your comfort zone, Krista. <laughs> and it forces you to look at this creativity, creatively so your juices flow a little bit. This picture is something I had you do it in your journal because you can reference it as a part of your vision statement. You've got a visual of where you're headed. You can use this and other items, you know, to kind of keep you in line with your vision statement as we create it. Make sense? All right. The last document that I gave you, and we might not have time to get through this, but, but let me say this while you're pulling it out. Oh, I'm sorry. No. No, we can't. <laughs> I was told. <laughs> okay, so what I was told, and, it, and certainly she has, I do whatever she tells me to do. But what I was told was to get you all the way up to where you could write your vision statement and have them prepared for next Bible study. You need more time. I will allow you. We, 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 Y'all know. Y'all can have that conversation with Pastor. <laughs> We're going straight Baptist. We're going to vote on it. <laughs> right. Right. We, we, can, we can take this further, you know, it, certainly. We'll prepare the materials. With all sincerity, I want to say that I don't want to just rush through my vision. Yes. And I, and I, I think that the book is great for me. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Okay, then let's do this. Let's do this. We're, we're really close on time, and I was kind of worried about rushing you through at least this last activity, too. Let's, let's do this. I hope she allows. You, got, you guys have to back me up. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask you to do is this document, and live stream, we'll make sure it's posted. Andre's going to tell me how to get all this stuff online, I hope, or somebody will. So you have an opportunity to do it, too. The document that you have in front of you we're going to turn this into your homework. Instead of having you actually write the vision statement, maybe we can do, we can ask Pastor if we can do that piece and a little bit more instruction around it next week. But if you would, take this visions, values worksheet with you and fill this out. This, is, this for me will help kind of organize your thoughts so that we can come back in, we can talk about, you know, what you value, what's important to you, and we can kind of help you fashion those into vision statements. Does that make sense? 
wonderful. And, you know, hopefully these pastors nodding and, and we'll, we'll make sure. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Wonderful. In your vision plan, yeah. here's here's what here's what we should have ultimately. Ultimately, we're we we are going to be just like small corporations. You know, everybody you work for, except for my organization, which I just think is funny. They probably kill me if they saw this on live stream. They don't have a vision or a mission statement because we are at the will of the governor. So whatever he says is important, or whatever he says is the priority, that's what we do. And that can turn on a dime. It could be something today. It could be, for instance, we, we were doing when algae was in Lake Erie. I know that sounds real crazy. But everything that we did during that time was related to algae. Everything else that we had going on, it was stopped because we got to figure out why the algae is in Lake Erie. And we are education. So we did a lot of research on, you know, how to get the algae. So we, are, we turn on a dime. As leaders, we have to have, we have to A, know who we are. That's our mission. Absolutely. We have to B, know our vision. We know who we are now, but we also need to know where we're headed. Those two things can never stand alone. That's where, remember when I said that you could have a vision, but you could start doing things that will walk you away from your vision? If you don't have an action plan, to keep you on course with your vision, you're going to put this nice little notebook on a shelf with all the other visions or whatever you've created in, over your lifetime, and it's never going to come into fruition. So what Pastor Sprinkle is talking about is the action plan. This is the rubber meets the road. This is the strategic plan for my vision. And that's, that's a, l a long way to say that I'm going to have some blueprints. I'm going to know what my dimensions are. I'm going to know what the colors of the seats in my wellness. You know what I mean? That's, that's your way of saying, okay, in two years, I will have this, this, and this. In five years, I will have this, this, and this. So when it's all said and done, you will have vision statements with action plans that you can go back to. This is what I do every year. Every year I go back to my vision statement and, and my action plans, and I say, okay, I, I did this. Oh, I'm kind, and kind, I didn't make it here. Or I'm close here. Just give me six more months, and I'll have this. This this has to come off. This is no longer relevant to me and where God is taking me. Does that make sense? That's how you work a full out vision plan. That's right. That's good. I was told that an action plan is necessary because without an action plan, uh, a goal is just a dream. That's good. That's good. That's good. So that's ultimately where we'll end up. We want to have a vision, but we don't want to just have the vision and have it be on the shelf because that, that's nothing. We want that dream to become reality. We want that dream to walk with us. We want that dream to come alive in Georgia or in Mansfield, wherever we end up being. Does that make sense? All right, so your homework. You're going to take this visions value worksheet, and you're going to work through it. Pray through it, work through it, okay? Some of these things you got to be very honest about. I like the one especially that says, uh, things I would like to stop doing or do less of. You know, some of us become real victims of just not being able to say no. <laughs> All of a sudden, your plate is full, and nothing is anything you enjoy or want to do because you've just said yes, and you've said yes, and you've said yes, and you've spread yourself too thin. we got to rein that back in. We want to make sure all of your actions are deliberate and meaningful. So that, that one for me I know will be a little bit of a challenge because there's a lot of things that I, would, I really would like to stop doing, but I don't know that I, I, I'd have to really work through not – being able to say, okay, I'll do that. Does that make sense? So I thought this was a very valuable tool. To end, 
We're going to do a quick demonstration. Take your orange paper. It is. It's a quick item. That's why we need more time. All right, so take your orange paper. Crumple it up. 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 Come on. Get it as balled up as you possibly can. Balled up as you possibly can. All right. Now we're going to smooth it out. Open it up. Smooth it out. Know where we're going? See if you can get as many wrinkles out as possible. all out? <laughs> I was about to say, do you think we'll ever get them all out? <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> and hope for the best. So why did I have you do this? <laughs> we are, okay, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Craig is just funny to me. He said, we're not going to end up on a bill fly. <laughs> so this is your mind. It's this little orange piece of paper. This is your mind. This crumpling is all the things that have pulled you away from what God wants for you. It's how people talk to you. It's how you've been treated. It's, you know, all of your experiences that make you, you. So right now... So we've taken our mind and we've decided that we're going to do something new. We're going to transform our mind. We're going to start thinking about things the way God would have us think about them. It's not perfect because we haven't yet prayed yet. We haven't yet re re transformed our mind. It's not perfect, but it isn't as bad as when it was in a ball. When we walk away from this, this is where we're going to be. We're going to be transformed back to where there's no wrinkles, no creases, no crumples, totally transformed, walking out our visions in Christ. Make sense? All right. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this experience. Thank you, God, for your will over our lives. Thank you, God that you've given us a desire to seek after you even the more. Thank you, God, that you've given us a desire to want after you even the more. Now, Father, your word says that we have got to renew our minds. We've got to transform, Father. So we speak now, God, that we're willing and we're available. Our minds are your minds, God. We surrender all of our buckets. We give those to you, God. Refashion us, remake us, recreate us, God. Hallelujah. We stand surrendered, God to the renewing. We stand surrendered, God, to the transforming. Transform us, God. Show us, God, the buckets that we need to let go of. Show us, God, how you want us to live. Show us, God, how you want us to think. Show us, God, hallelujah, the buckets that you have for us, God. Help us to renew our mind and be the leaders that you created us to be, God. We decree and declare right now that we leave this place changed God that we're on fire God and we're seeking after your vision and not only do we want to know it but we want to live it God hallelujah so we speak now the release of resources we speak now the release of everything we need God to live out our visions in you hallelujah we will not stray we will not go to the left we will not go to the right God but we set our face like a flint walking into your vision we thank you God hallelujah we thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Live stream. Check us out on the website. We'll get the documents on there for you. Amen.